the Planning and Zoning Committee. Uh, I will run through the roll call. Um, I am present. Councilmember Bradford is present. Councilmember Gamble is present. I believe Councilmember Hager is absent. Councilmember Hall is absent. Councilmember Murphy is absent. Councilmember O'Connell is present in the chamber. Uh, Councilmember Parker is present. Con Vice Chair Rutherford is present. I believe Councilmember Sepulveda is absent. Councilmember Van Reese is absent. And Councilmember Welsh is present. So that gives us a total of seven. And therefore, I detect a quorum. So um, as usual, most of our items, but not quite all, are on the consent uh, agenda. So what I'll do is I'm, I'm going to run through the item numbers and bill numbers um, for items that I have on our consent calendar. Uh, then I'll ask if anyone has anything that needs to be pulled off of those. And then I will go through the process of reading the captions uh, in order to clear those from us before we proceed to the remaining items. Um, so the first uh, item that I have on consent is item number one, resolution RS 2022-1537. Um, and Councilmember McConnell, this is for an aerial encroachment at 315 Union Street. Counts item number three, which is ordinance number BL 2022-1189. Uh, this is for um, water infrastructure at 3800 Charlotte. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Murphy. Item number four, uh, BL 2022-1235. This is for water infrastructure that Metro happens to handle that is in Williamson County, and I'm a sponsor on that one. Item number five, Ordinance BL 2022-1236. This is for uh, water infrastructure on 39th Avenue North. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Taylor. Item number six, Ordinance BL 2022-1237. This is for 1237. So this is for um, water infrastructure in the reservoir zone seven at 1501 Hillside Avenue. We have a letter to approve from Council Member Sledge. Item number seven, BL 2022, 1238. This is for water infrastructure at 7131 Centennial Boulevard. We have a letter to approve from Council Member Roberts. Item number eight, BL 2022-1239. This is for sewer infrastructure at 1100B Sunnymead Drive. Um, Council Member Benedict is present. Item number nine, BL 2022-1240. This is for sewer infrastructure at 2126 Marsha Drive. We have, um, this is for Council Members. Uh, I'm present on that one, so I will go ahead and move that one forward. Um, B, item number 10, Ordinance number BL 2022-1241. This is for property located at 204 Ben Allen Road and 121 Hart Lane. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Van Rees. Item number 11, BL 2022-1242. This is for sewer easement rights at 3038 Lakeshore Drive. Uh, item number 12, BL 2022-1243. This is for sewer infrastructure at 1200 Cottage View Lane. Item number 13, uh, BL 2022-1244 for sewer infrastructure at 2100 Century Farms Parkway. Item number 14, BL 2022-1245 for sewer infrastructure at, on Long Boulevard. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Taylor. Item number 15, BL 2022-1246 for sewer infrastructure at 842 Hamilton Crossings. Um, for items on third, those are items on second. For items on third reading, we have substitute ordinance BL 2022 1073. Um, this is pertains to daycare home uses. We have Councilmember Cash is present. Um, let's see, item number 20, which is BL 2022 1191. Can we take that one separate from the one before, or should we just take them together? Well, because I was thinking the one up there has an amendment. Take them together. Okay. Uh, we will hold off item number 20 to go with item number 19. Um, next on consent is item number 21, BL 2022-1192. Uh, for property located at 4130 Andrew Jackson Park, we have a letter to approve from Councilmember Hager. Um, item number 22, BL 2022-1193 at 5797 Mount View Road. Um, 
do not have a letter from Councilmember Stiles. I'll go ahead and move that one. And if Councilmember Stiles wishes us to do something else on the floor, she'll let us know. Um, following with that, BL 2022-1194 uh, is the same property for materials. Um, also, item number 24, BL 2022-1195, Councilmember Stiles. Um, same thing. BL item number 25, BL 2022-1196, Councilmember Toombs. 1400 Brook Church Pike. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Toombs. Item number 26, BL 2022 1197, um, 400 Eden Wald Road. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Young. Item number 27, BL 2022 1200 from Councilmember Swope. This is on Bluff Road. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Swope. Similarly, item number 28, BL 2022 1201. Uh, which is the materials provision for the same property. Item number 29, BL 2022-1202, which is um, 2401 Meharry Boulevard. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Taylor. Item number 30, BL 2022-1203, um, which, is eight, which is 230 Cumberland Bend. We have a letter to approve from Councilmember Toombs. Item number 31, BL 2022-1206. Uh, for property located at 405B, 31st Avenue North, we have a letter to approve from Councilmember Taylor. Item number 33, BL 2022-1208, 1308 Cardinal Avenue, uh, Councilmember Benedict is present. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add this one to our consent just to keep things moving. This is uh, item number 34, BL 2022-1209 for property located on Monticello Drive. Uh, Council Member Toombs requests a one meeting deferral. So I'll go ahead and place that on our consent agenda. And then item number 35, BL 2022-1211, um, 2115 24th Avenue North. We have a letter to approve from Council Member Toombs. Does anyone have any of those items that you wish to pull from the consent calendar? Last call for anything of those to come off of consent. I will recognize the planning table. Just for clarity, 1209 is consented to for one meeting, correct? That's correct, yeah. Anything else? All right, I will um, start reading through the consent agenda. <laughs> so item number one, resolution RS 2022-1537, the sponsors are Council Members O'Connell, Withers and Young, authorizes TN Partners to tell owner LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 315 Union Street. Item number three, Ordinance Bill 2022-1189, the sponsors are Council Members Murphy, Withers, and Young, authorizes Metro government to abandon sanitary uh, infrastructure and to accept new sanitary sewer infrastructure for property located at 3800 Charlotte Avenue. Item number four, Bill 2022-1235, the sponsors are Council Members Withers and Young, authorizes Metro government to accept new sewer infrastructure for property located at 9828 Split Lock Road in Williamson County, also known as Rosebook Rosebrook phase three. Item number five, ordinance bill 2022-1236. The sponsors are council members Taylor, Withers and Young, authorizes Metro government to abandon water mains and to accept new water mains and fire hydrant assemblies for property located at 39th Avenue North unnumbered. Uh, item number six, Bill 2022-1237, the sponsors are Council Member Sledge, Withers and Young, authorizes Metro Government to abandon fire hydrant assemblies and accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer mantles and easements for property located at 1501 Hillside Avenue, also known as the Reservoir Zone 7. Item number seven, BL 2022-1238, the sponsors are Council Members Roberts, Withers and Young, authorizes Metro Government to abandon uh, sanitary sewer main and easement to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer main hole and easement for property located at 7131 Centennial Boulevard. Item number eight, ordinance BL 2022-1239, the sponsors are council members Benedict Withers and Young, authorizes Metro government to accept new sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer main hole for property located at 1100B Sunnymead Drive, also known as Sunnymead Commons. Item number nine, BL 2022-1240, Sponsors are council members Withers and Young, authorizes Metro government to accept new sanitary sewer and sanitary sewer force mains, sanitary sewer manhole and easements for property located at 2126 Marsha Drive, also known as Rivergate View Subdivision. 
Item number 10, ordinance number BL 2022-1241. The sponsors are council members Van Rees, Withers and Young, authors as Metro Government, to accept public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 204 Ben Allen Road and 121 Hart Lane, also known as Ben Allen Phase 2. Item number 11, ordinance number BL 2022-1242. The sponsors are council members Withers and Young, authorized as Metro Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer easement rights for property located at 3038 Lakeshore Drive. Item number 12, ordinance number BL 2022-1243. The sponsors are council members Lee, Withers and Young, authorized as Metro Government to accept new water and sanitary mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at 1200 Cottage View Lane, also known as Timber Trails Phase 3. Item number 13, <laughs> ordinance number BL 2022-1244. The sponsors are council member Stiles, Withers and Young, authorized as Metro Government to abandon existing water main and to accept new water main for property located at 2100 Century Farms Parks Parkway. Item number 14, ordinance BL 2022-1245. The sponsors are council members Taylor, Withers and Young, authorized as Metro Government to accept a new public sanitary sewer manhole for property located at Long Boulevard, unnumbered. Item number 15, ordinance number BL 2022-1246. The sponsors are council members Stiles, Withers, and Young, authorized as Metro Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 842 Hamilton Crossings, also known as Hamilton Crossings Phase 2. Moving on to bills on third reading, we have um, item number 16, substitute ordinance BL 2022-1073. The sponsors are council members Cash, Evans, Allen, and others. Amends various sections of the Metro Code to delete the daycare home use, create a new daycare home use small and daycare home use large uses and to update the requirements for opening a daycare home or daycare center. Item number... Item number 21, ordinance number BL 2022-1192, the sponsor is Council Member Hager, amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending the 4130 Andrew Jackson Parkway specific plan district located at 4130 Andrew Jackson Parkway um, to permit the addition of 1,962 square feet to an existing eye care facility Item number 22, Ordinance Bill 2022-1193, the sponsor's council member Stiles amends the Metro Zoning Code by applying a historic landmark overlay district to property located at 5797 Mount View Road. Item number 23, Bill 2022-1194, the sponsor's council member Stiles addresses the above property at 5797 Mount View Road and includes materials restrictions. Item number 24, Bill 2022-1195, the sponsor's council member Stiles, also pertains to 5797 Mount View Road uh, to permit the conversion of an existing accessory structure into an, exist into an additional dwelling unit and to allow short-term rental uses within that additional dwelling unit. Item number 25, Ordinance Bill 2022-1196, the sponsor's council member Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CL to SP Zoning for properties located at 1400 Brick Church Pike at the corner of Arctic Avenue and Brick Church Pike to permit a mixed use development. Item number 26, Ordinance Bill 2022 1197. The sponsor's council member Young amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CS to SP zoning for property located at 400 Edenwald Road to permit auto repair and warehouse uses, all, all of which are described herein. Item number 27, Ordinance Bill 2022-1200, the sponsor's council member Swope amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from AR to A, RM4, and RS10 to SP Zoning for properties located at 6578 Bluff Road and Bluff Road Unnumbered to permit 182 multifamily units. Item number 28, uh, Ordinance BL 2022-1201 from council member Swope um, is addresses the same property and adds material uses. Uh, item number 29, Ordinance Bill 2022-1202. Sponsors Council Member Taylor amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 2401 Meharry Boulevard. 
number 30, Ordinance Bill 2022-1203, the sponsors Councilmember Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IDBD to MUGANS, zoning for property located at 230 Cumberland Bend. Item number 31, Ordinance Number BL 2022-1206, the sponsors Councilmember Taylor amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from OG to ORIA, zoning for property located at 405B 31st Avenue North. Item number 33, uh, Ordinance Number BL 2022-1208, the sponsors Councilmember Benedict amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS10 to R10, zoning for property located at 1308 Cardinal Avenue. Um, item number 34, which is Ordinance Number BL 2022-1209, the sponsors Councilmember Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS7.5 to R8 zoning for property located at Mount Ocello Drive, unnumbered. And this item is for on consent for a one meeting deferral at the request of the sponsor. And final number, item number 35, Ordinance Number BL 2022-1211, the lead sponsors Councilmember Toombs uh, amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IWD to OR20NS zoning for property located at 2115 24th Avenue North. Um, and those are the items for our consent calendar. Uh, could I call on our Vice Chair Rutherford to make a motion on the consent calendar? Chairman, I move approval of the consent agenda. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Chair. Is there a second? Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, fantastic. So we've moved quite a few items to our uh, consent calendar, and now we can move to items for discussion. Uh, the first item is item number two, which is Ordinance Number Bill 2022-1169. These sponsors are Council Members Benedict Allen and Withers, approves a lease agreement by and between Metro Government, acting by and through the Metro Board of Education and the East End Prep. And this is Council Member... Um, Benedict, and I'll go ahead and recognize Councilmember Benedict. Thank you, Chair. I really appreciate um, uh, being recognized as I'm not a member of this committee. Um, this bill is something I've been working on with MNPS through the administration, and it sounds like this afternoon we've gotten to an agreement where we want to be on this. Um, in a nutshell, the, we'll, there will be an amendment that will get filed, I just um, determined. But um, the rents for these schools or for that that are done the rent studies that are provided to the council and to mnps is um, is what mr prophet from mnps has said we base the lease amount on the rent study performed by the appraiser and then we add a four percent escalation factor to those amounts the appraisal in march of 2021 showed that market rate was five dollars per square foot for the lease the contract that started that we're, we're voting to approve through this bill um, the contract started July 14th of 2021, so that was about three months after, and the lease started at $4 a square foot. So to be consistent with policy, with the, the with what MNPS has shared with us, the first year's rent should start at $5, and then it would have a 4% escalator afterwards. So um, I did receive confirmation from the administration this afternoon if Mr. Jamison wants to give us a nod um, <laughs> thank you. Then um, we will be drawing up an amendment. I'll ask um, um, Director Darby to drop an amendment that will get attached to this. So I will seek a one meeting deferral. That one meeting deferral is going to automatically kick this into an, um, an indefinitely deferred bill because it is our third single um, deferral. Um, my intent is to get that amendment put together and get it and refile it in plenty of time for the June 7th meeting so that this hopefully will get put to bed at that time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Benedict. Is there any other discussion? Um, Vice Chair Rutherford, would you, since you're on the committee, would you make a motion on behalf of Councilmember Benedict? Uh, yes, so moved. For a one meeting deferral. For one meeting deferral. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have a second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you, Vice Chair Rutherford. Um, let's see, what do we have next? We go quite a way through. So I think the next one that I have is Councilmember Henderson, number 17. All right, so the next item uh, before us is item number 17. Uh, this is the second substitute for Ordinance BL 2022 1121. The 
sponsors are council members Henderson, Murphy, Withers, and others. This ordinance amends Title 17 of the Metro uh, Zoning Code to amend chapters 17.12, and 0 .40 pertaining to the cluster lot option. And um, I will go to, um, I'll go ahead and send this over to uh, Council Member Henderson for a description. We do have uh, an amend two amendments as well, but I'll go ahead and recognize Council Member Henderson for a description. Thank, thank you, Chair Weathers. Uh, colleagues, uh, we had our uh, public hearing um, at last meeting, um, and we had a whole lot of emails in your inbox and um, some from our, our nonprofit uh, community, um, but I appreciate the opportunity to, to share about this because I think because folks are, uh, are, are satisfied with this, um, we, we did not have a long line of people um, uh, uh, speaking regarding the bill. Um, this has been a... Uh, over a year long uh, process uh, with uh, planning staff, um, with multiple uh, stakeholder meetings uh, to contemplate a rework of the former uh, kind of cluster lot provision. And um, what this contemplates is for additional density, uh, prioritizing the preservation of natural resources and natural space. Uh, so forested area, uh, large stands of mature trees, and um, whereas previously in the cluster lot, it was just kind of open space, and that might have included your, uh, your, your stormwater um, area, which had been uh, graded and disturbed. Um, and then, you know, so it was kind of a, a somewhat of a quality issue, right? What, what you were um, getting in return uh, for the clustering. And so um, this wanted to uh, uh, move this to something that I think is something that we as a body and our constituents care about, the preservation of forested area, critical slopes, uh, stands of mature trees. And so uh, through an uh, extensive stakeholder process, um, staff, um, Sean Shepard, Molly Pike, um, a whole lot of gratitude to them on their work. Um, uh, Came up with this, and so I welcome your uh, questions. If I can provide you any more um, details, uh, thank you so much. Uh, if I could ask, call on uh, Vice Chair Rutherford uh, to move the bill, I guess first, and then we have two amendments. So, motion on the bill. Do we have a second? Okay, we, so we have a second. Um, colleagues, is there any other discussion on now that it's been moved? Do we have any other discussion on the bill itself in, in its base form? We do have two amendments. Um, since you're uh, standing and I've already recognized you, Council Member Henderson, uh, if you could go ahead. Uh, Vice Chair Rutherford, could you move uh, Council Member Henderson's amendment? Motion on the amendment. Is there a second? And then I'll get to Council Member Gamble as well. Um, okay, so we, we've got you covered. So if Council Member Henderson, if you could go ahead and discuss your amendment with us. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, this uh, amendment, I, I think we uh, intended to have it on at last meeting. Um, it was in response to uh, questions from the Planning Commission at our first meeting, um, with which I concurred, looking at as we kind of move to uh, a new process uh, for subdivision development out of the cluster lot process, making sure we don't get anybody kind of caught in the middle, so to speak. Um, and as well, um, from a, a, a staffing and an implementation perspective, um, uh, the process uh, that this uh, um, the process for this process, right? Um, it, it needs some uh, uh, time to make sure that we've got that in place. And so it's an effective date for the legislation of September 14th is what this amendment is. Great, thank you. Um, and I'll go ahead and call on uh, uh, Mr. Lehman from the planning table, just if, if you have any additional things. No, that I don't you would think I have anything else to add. That, just, that effective date just lines up with our submittal deadlines for cases being submitted. Okay, great. So, um, any other discussion on that amendment? Uh, looks like Councilmember Allen. Go ahead. I can just ask one more question. I appreciate all the work Councilmember Henderson has has done on this, and and then adjusting to it. I know that that you all are also working on on creating guidelines back for the quote cluster lot, which is going to have a new name or whatever. Do you expect that that may be ready by the time? This we're, becomes effective. We we expect that it will be ready. I mean, we're hoping to have it to the commission in July and then to the council after that. So I think they'll line up, up about with this 
uh, this effective date. Great. So I can't I can't guarantee it because we're still going through that process. But I think that that's the plan is that they'll kind of come online at the same time. Okay, I think that's great. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion on Councilmember Henderson's amendment? Um, with that, all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So we've got that uh, ready to go. Um, the next uh, amendment that we have is from Councilmember Gamble, and I'll go ahead and recognize Councilmember um, Gamble to discuss your amendment. Thank you, Chair. This amendment uh, is meant as a friendly amendment to the bill. I support the bill. Appreciate Councilmember um, Henderson for bringing this bill forward. This addresses an issue that comes up quite a bit in District 3 uh, since we have a, a large amount of T3 suburban area within District 3 and uh, developers using the cluster lot option uh, to help maintain open space but it, within the designs of their uh, projects. But this helps to ensure that we have uh, that open space um, uh, confirmed or verified, and it's not a question. It's not um, something that is done as a as a part of space that's not buildable, but a restricted designated open space. What this amendment does is, in addition to adding uh, walking trails and bike trails as um, allowed permitted uses in the open natural space, it also would allow for recreation uh, in this in the open space at a limited uh, scope. It would only allow for um, athletic courts, playgrounds, things like that, with using permeable pavements, uh, and also would restrict it to 5% or less of the open space area, but it would provide another uh, amenity option for families who want to live in the suburban uh, area but have that type of amenity for their families without disturbing a lot of the uh, natural space. So this is something uh, that I've spoken with the uh, Nashville Tree Corps about and the planning uh, staff about, and I, I think it's a good compromise so that we're maintaining open space, but we're also providing options for families who, who in addition to walking trails, uh, want and need recreational of facilities within a development. And with that, I ask for your support. All right, um, I, let me go to the planning table to just get any comments from Mr. Lehman on that. Uh, no no comments. I think we're, we're supportive of that amendment as well. We don't, we think it has enough flexibility built into it that we can work with that to uh, allow appropriate types of uses in the open space areas. And just to confirm Mr. Lehman, so the open space areas themselves are still evaluated by staff is that right correct? we'll the still review plan. plans and and be able to give feedback on um the each plan that comes through so I, we're comfortable with the amendment okay thank you um any other discussion on councilmember gamble's amendment all right so all in favor please say aye once again please say aye <laughs> any uh any opposition any abstentions Okay, so that one is also recommended. Um, could I now get a, a committee member to uh, move the bill as amended? I'll call on Vice Chair Rutherford. Motion on the bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Chair. Is there a second? Any other further discussion on the bill as amended? With both amendments. All right, all in favor, please say aye. Any abstentions or any opposition? Any abstentions? Okay. So the bill is recommended seven in favor, zero against zero abstentions with both amendments. So thank you, everyone, for that. Uh, the next item is number 18, Substitute Ordinance BL 2022-1122. The sponsors are Councilmember Henderson, Murphy, Withers, and others. This amends the Metro Zoning Code uh, pertaining to tree protection and replacement. Um, as well as amending chapters 2.26, 17.20, 17.24, 17.28, 17.20, and 17.40 to make associated housekeeping amendments, all of which is described here, herein. Um, could I get a motion on the bill, and then we'll go to the amendment? Is there a motion on the bill? Vice Chair Rutherford moves the bill. Is there a second? All right, so now I'll go to um, Vice Chair Ruther, Could you also move the amendment, please, for on behalf of Councilmember Henderson? Motion on the amendment. Thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and recognize Councilmember Henderson for a description. 
Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Withers. So this is an associated housekeeping for the uh, tree um, area of our code. And so um, it really effectuates kind of a consolidation um, and is looking at trees, um, not just as things that go in landscape buffers, let's say. Um, so it's really kind of, uh, I think, doing some important work, uh, foundational work in our code on which we can build a future tree legislation. Um, additionally, because um, it's, it's traveling with this bill because uh, with uh, conservation development, when you are required to protect a forested area or a stand of mature trees, we have to make sure that we fence and protect those. Um, uh, and so there's language in that regard about our tree protection fencing. And additionally, um, regarding replacement, right? Mm. So um, if we're going to say, uh, you know, you have to uh, protect these as part of uh, your, your clustering, then we want to make sure that we have a very specific um, uh, uh, provision for if those trees that are protected are lost, um, uh, that they have to be replaced uh, one, one for one. Great. Um, could I call on the uh, council uh, legal director just to verify, is this uh, more housekeeping or if there are any substit substantive matters in it? In the amendment, mm -hmm. housekeeping. It is housekeeping. It's just Okay, so perfect. Just wanted to, to verify that. So with that, is there any further discussion on the amendment? Not apologize. The amendment also, Chair, um, is the September 14th date, so September that it will correspond with the other um, piece of legislation with which it's traveling. Perfect. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So the amendment is added. Now for the bill as amended, could I call on Vice Chair Rutherford? Motion on the bill as amended. Thank you. Is there a second? Perfect. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Terrific. Thank you so much, Councilmember Henderson, for all of your work on that very complex topic. Um, next, we have. Uh, Next, we have uh, item number, uh, we'll take 19 and 20 together, if that's okay. These are in District uh, 2, but we do have letters to approve from Council Member Toombs, but I'll read the captions. These are items number uh, 19, Ordinance BL 2020-1190, sponsors Council Member Toombs, changes the zoning code from CS and IWD to SP zoning for properties located at 2405 Plum Street, 2600 and 2604 Dickerson Pike, Plum Street unnumbered and Dickerson Pike, Pike unnumbered at the northwest corner of Rock Street and Dickerson to permit a 349 unit multifamily residential, all of which is described herein. Um, Vice Chair Rutherford, could I call on you to move the bill and then also the amendment? Uh, motion on the bill and motion on the amendment. Great. Thank you so much. Um, could I get the uh, council director to describe the amendment for us? I apologize. Which one or should I call on the planning table? Planning table. Could I call on the planning table instead? <laughs> Um, the amendment adds a uh, new condition seven that was sent over from the planning department related to their approval that um, states that additional vehicular access along Plum Street may be permitted during the si final site plan review. And if the additional access is proposed, any buffer or screening required will be evaluated at planning staff's discretion. Great. Thank you so much for that. Any other discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Any uh, opposition, any abstentions? So the amendment is moved. Um, could I call on Vice Chair Rutherford to move the bill as amended? Motion on the bill as amended. Thank you, is there a second? Great, all in favor, please say aye. Any, uh, any opposition, any abstentions? So it moves as amended. Uh, and then we'll take with that item number 20, Ordinance Bill 2020-1191, which addresses the same properties but has um, materials restrictions. Vice Chair Rutherford, would you mind moving that bill as well? Motion on the bill. Great. Is there a second? Um, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And Councilmember Toombs, your timing is perfect. We just approved your bills. So. Um, so 
So it'll be next up, 32. Yeah. I'll let you go ahead and get seated because your next item is also up before us, so. <laughs> this is item number 32. I'll go ahead and read the caption. Uh, it is ordinance number bill 2022-1207. Um, the sponsor is Council Member Toombs, who's present, but she also has a letter to approve because she's diligent. Uh, this amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IWD to MUG zoning for property located at 210 Cumberland Bend. There is a substitute. Could I call on Vice Chair Rutherford to, um, to move the bill? Motion on the bill. Is there a second? Um, great. And then also the substitute. Could you move that, please? Motion on the substitute. Is there a second? All right, uh, could I call on the planning table to discuss the substitute. The substitute just converts the proposed zoning from MUG to MUGNS to remove short-term rental. Short -term rentals. All right, um, we've got a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Uh, Vice Chair Rutherford, would you mind moving the bill as substituted? Motion on the bill as substituted. Great, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Terrific. Um, let's see, item 34 we have deferred. I think that brings us to the end. All right, well, I have worked Vice Chair Rutherford very hard today, so I appreciate his service. Um, I believe that that concludes the business of the Planning and Zoning Committee. Is there a motion to adjourn? All right. I'll, we are adjourned and I will hand this over to Councilmember Parker for the Affordable Housing Committee. Thank you, everyone.